<laughs> well, <laughs> welcome back. Here's another draft, and here's another Lotus. I've been opening insane recently, I'm not going to lie. The funny thing is, I also just put all the drafts I record up, so it's not like I'm waiting for me to open a Lotus and then recording it. I'm just opening a lot of Black Lotuses. I really, really cannot complain about opening power. From yesterday's Time Walk Black Lotus joint to today's Black Lotus Time Walk Ancestral, well, we'll see about the rest. But at the very least, a Black Lotus. Uh, I am passing to Mati. It is myself. It is Dan. It is Mac the Knife and Updraft Elemental taking on Mati, Troll Ascetic, Tobias, and Slacks. So, we got some 4 on 4 action. I'm sad I'm not going to get to Lurus Lotus. I do love doing that. But, Lurus is gone. The two fetches, Itali are gone. Deep Cavern Bat, Rafine's Tower. Probably Lotus Cobra, so maybe I'll get back Basalt Monolith, Starving Revenant. Something like that. Well, I'm taking Black Lotus, and I'm going to follow it up with... Probably Underground Sea. Underground Sea is a pretty good land, and I don't really want to like go in on Crucible this early. Same with like Liliana, Spellbinder. Let's just take Underground Sea. And oh, 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 there's a Thassa's Oracle. Now, I'm not going to take it here, but I want to note it because Lotus is the absolute best card to pair with Doomsday. And no one really takes Doomsday generally because it's pretty hard to use. I mean, Doomsday is one of those cards I think well deserves a slot in the cube. Even if it mostly doesn't get played when it does, it's awesome, and that that kind of stuff is cool. But uh, just seeing that Thassa's Oracle there is a good sign. It kind of makes me want to just take Jar here and just go for the Gusto. Normally I wouldn't take Jar over like Palantir or Ketria Triome this early, but Jar in a combo deck is pretty real, and I think one, two, three... Yeah, I think there's a pretty almost rock-solid chance I wheel Oracle. Here now it's Lorien Revealed versus Volcanic. I think Volcanic is still better. I love being a Lorien Revealed, I really do, but uh, Volcanic is awesome. And I'm, I'm looking to be Grixis here, past that Thalia. Now I'll probably just take Grim Monolith. We're just trying to do broken stuff. When you open on Lotus, you get a little more leeway for that. So I'm going to take Grim Monolith over Hallowed Fountain, Zagoth Triome, Witness. With this Lotus is not even really that good of a combo. Sacking Lotus to witness back Lotus is like you built a zero mana 2-1. I wouldn't put a zero mana 2-1 in most of my cube decks. So, I mean, obviously it's flexible. You can only do that if you need it. But I like starting with some good mana stuff, some good mana fixing, and a draw 7. Kind of seeing where this goes from here. And here, it's pretty clear. We just take Frantic Search. We're, we're, we're going for it. We're now live for Underworld Breach. We already were with Lotus. But Frantic Search is great. Pass up on uh, Life Death would be the other option here. But... I've got higher hopes. We're, we're storming today. And actually, I think it now is the time I take Street Wraith. This seems like uh, we're, we're really hoping to hit a Doomsday here. I'm going to put that in the zeros. And Street Wraith can, can really make that pop. Oh, wow. That's a late Gaia's Cradle. I could take Deceiver because I could take Twin, but I don't really like that very much. My main concern is that I just don't really like putting Twin combo in a Storm deck because... They have a bunch of removal that is otherwise dead and now disrupts your combo. Is that, honestly, I think I'm just going to hate Guy's Cradle. It's just so much better than every other card there. There's no real reason to pass it. I'm going to put the Wraith behind the Lotus. I wanna, the more time I can spend looking at Black Lotus, the better. Oh, so this is an interesting pick. I think I'm going to take the High Tide. I normally don't. But Basalt Monolith, I don't think is that good. And I have Frantic Search plus two Island Duels. All right, I mean... High Tide's got to earn its keep somehow. It's a late Crucible. I guess I could take Crucible. Maybe there's some sort of Crucible action going on. I'm not going to play the rest of these cards. Thassa's Oracle didn't wheel? Someone already took Doomsday? Are you kidding me? Huh. I'll take Ketria Triome then. That's fine. I don't think I want Lotus Field that much. I, Lotus Field Frantic Search is good, but Lotus Field High Tide is not. And then I guess I take... Cursed Scroll, or I could take Titania, but I have Crucible. There is a world where I end up in a Crucible Titania deck, I think. I'm really, I'm, I'm shocked Dasta's Oracle got taken. Did someone like, how do you how do you get there? Uh, I guess I'll take the Witness too. I don't think I want Haywire Might, and I don't care about Dam. Wow, it got past a lot of green cards right at the end. I, I like Tarmogoy. If I don't, I don't, this doesn't look too much like an Avacyn's Pilgrim deck. Or a Tarmogoyf deck, to be honest. I guess, like, I'm trying to think, how do you get to 
taking a Doomsday or Thassa's Oracle that early, but uh, I guess so So it goes. I mean, it's not like we had committed a bunch of picks with the expectation of Oracle anyway. We don't have the Doomsday. But mainly what it means to me is the odds that someone else already has Doomsday in their pile have gone up dramatically, because otherwise why would you take Thassa's Oracle? There's some pretty playable cards in that pack. Okay. Pack two time. Let's see what we got here. Well, there's Time Twister, so no Time Walk, but uh, I'll happily take Time Twister. Another draw seven is perfect. And maybe we'll wheel Mystical. There's a Comet in the pack, a, tr a Time Warp, a True Name, a Thief, Skydiver. I mean, whoever took the Thassa's Oracle and Doomsday <laughs> are probably going to take that. That's okay. We'll, we'll take Time Twister, and then this pack is terrible. What's going on here, huh? I mean, I guess I could take Faithless Looting, but that doesn't sound all that interesting. I could take Chain Lightning. I could just take Mishra's Bobble. I might just do that. I just, I don't really see what Chain Lightning is doing for me here. I mean, I guess it just, it's a way to interact. It is like one of the best cards in the pack. Yeah, no, Chain Lightning's fine. I'll just take it. Bobble's probably not going to come back. Someone always finds a use for that card. But I have two blue-red duels. So early removal is good. Oh, I got to take Brain Freeze. Wow, that's a, that's a Mana Vault too. Brain Freeze, though, is, like, crucial in having this deck actually have a win condition. I think as good as Mana Vault is, it just feels like... A, I don't know. That's interesting. So part of the the downside to, to passing Mana Vault is that Tobias is going to be able to take and use Mana Vault and probably can't use the Brain Freeze, but the Brain Freeze is not coming back. There's just no chance. Maybe I just take Mana Vault... And this deck could actually reach for the skies and, and play Tendrils. You know what? I'm going to try that. I'm going to take the Mana Vault. This is a team draft after all. There's Yogwil. All right. Yogwil, Lotus, High Tide, Frantic Search. Yeah, this this deck could actually Tendril someone. I'm not going to take the, the Zern Orb, despite having Crucible, because Yogwil is like, too important for this deck. But if Zern Orb wheels, there is there is room for Zern Orb, Titania, Crucible, side, you know, kind of side action. Here I'm going to take Narset, though. I already have a draw seven. Jar and Narset's not really a combo because they just get their hand back. But this looks like a good Narset deck. I don't think I need Xander's Lounge. I have three duels already. Okay, and there's the Tendrils. I got to slam it. All right, now I feel very good about passing that Brain Freeze. We have a win condition. A win condition has hit the building. I'm not going to try to wheel the Tendrils. This deck needs it so badly that uh <laughs> I, I think taking wheeling trying to wheel it would be crazy dac would be fine in this deck but not worth risking not having tendrils also i like chain lightning chain lightning is kind of like two and a half spells when it comes to tendrils because it does five damage effectively because you cast it and nug them for three and it's an extra spell which makes killing them a little bit easier tendrils actually does struggle to get to 10 sometimes and chain lightning can make it nine or even eight if they've taken one point of damage so I like where we're going here. All right, and this pack has, well, it has Mishra's Workshop, which is good at casting Grim Monolith and Memory Jar. It also has Ramanop, so I could have Ramanop Crucible. I don't really know what I'm doing with all that. Could take Firebolt. I don't think I want Psy. I don't really want a Black White Talisman. Let's just take the Workshop. Probably won't play it, but in the event that Workshop kind of gets there, it will be really powerful to have. Oh, and then here I just easily take Force Negation because not only do I have enough blue cards that I could actually play it, also it's the kind of card I'm going to have a really hard time beating. So let's take Force Negation and pass Snuff Out and Quick Reflexes, Portal of Phyrexia. So, so we're getting some decent green past the other direction. So that could mean in pack three I, could, I don't have to hate green cards so aggressively. Not that I spent a bunch of early picks on these cards. I just took them when there wasn't too much left to take. But I like this Classic Storm now. The cards I want most, besides power, of course, is the usual caveat. You know what? I'm going to make it a rule. When I say the cards I want most, of course I always mean power. But past that, uh, Dark Ritual would be massive. Candelabra Wheeling was a huge gift because High Tide Candelabra is a real way to generate mana. And this deck needs ways to generate mana more than anything else. Um, is there any chance I would like sneak a Mentor in here? Not really. I might... I don't care about Murderous Cut, especially with Yago in my deck. I'm not playing it. I'm going to take the Hierarch because I... Well, it's weird because Dan it seemed, or Tobias it seemed like passed a lot of really late green also. So it kind of makes me want to just take the Monastery Mentor and pass the rest. Uh, Pirate's Bow Bomb is a fine sideboard card against Thalia. 
I might lose to Armageddon, but you know, so it goes. Also, this deck actually could, if I saw Academy, I would probably try it. There's a really late twin. There's Aetherflux Reservoir, which is kind of like a Tendrils. And there's Thran Dynamo, which works really nice with Misha's Workshop. So let's do that. The Workshop looks like it's kind of active. Oh, Sail into the West. I don't know that I'm going to be able to play green in my deck. The High Tide help uh, restricts me. But Ketria Triumph taps for green. Another draw seven could be, could be awesome. All right, I'll take Sinkhole. Okay. Well, we've opened Lotus Time Twister. And at this point, Time Twister is certainly power. So... Let's see what pack three brings to us. Let's see if we can uh, continue the streak. <laughs> this deck's not really missing anything. Dark Ritual would be awesome. Cabal Ritual would be good. Mm, okay, we did miss, finally. A really bad opening pack. I might, I mean, I'm tempted to just Feywild Caretaker because it's the best card in the pack. Well, Teferi and Feywild Caretaker are both pretty good. Soren's Ransom is actually the card I'm most likely to play, but that might wheel. But even if it doesn't, Turnabout is, is great. And Feywild Caretaker, if you Lotus it out or Mana Vault it out, it actually can be pretty good. So let's just take that. Now, do I want Steam Vents, a blue-red duel, or a blue-black duel? Marsh Flats is a blue-black duel. The difference is Marsh Flats can, can grow in value. Steam Vents doesn't usually really change. The downside is if I've already drawn Underground Sea, this doesn't get an island. Uh, Marsh Flats is still probably the pick here, I would imagine. And maybe there's regrowths in the future. I don't know. Scalding Tarn. Wheel Seething Song. I think I'd be happy to play Song. I don't care about him to Turok that much. All right. Scalding Tarn's just great. That's just a blue, black, red, green duel <laughs> already. Okay. A pretty slow first couple picks. It's still realistic to get Dark Ritual. And you're always live to get Cabal Ritual. And I'm finally a deck that wants both of those cards. So I'm really hoping to get some Rituals. Lotus Petal would be great too. Just things that work with Yoggle at this point. Um, I'm feeling good about that brain freeze pass actually, so we'll, we'll see. That was a, that was a tough pick. And here, this is kind of a disappointing pack. Uh, I don't really want Scrubland. I could fetch it with Marsh Flats, but am I really going to want Monastery Mentor in this deck? Actually, Monastery Mentor doesn't sound crazy. Come Lotus it out early, and I have a lot of spells. All right, I'll take I'll take Scrubland over Oliphant then. I don't think this deck's very likely to hard cast Oliphant. Oh, there's Disrupt. I love this card. I added this one. Counter target instant or sorcery they, unless they pay one and it uh, <laughs> draws you a card. All right, let's assume Mentor is making the cut. Let's just pick five. Uh, I have a lot of lands, but that I don't care about that too much. I might just play take Watery Grave just to make this high tide stuff work better over dismember i could also take trop to make sail into the west good trop as well it actually doesn't make scalding tarn into blue or into green it makes it into untapped green is all because catcher charm already gets green i think watery grave is still going to be better for me another fetch or a counter spell this at this point probably has to be counter spell i don't think i'm a displacer kitten deck i mean it's got some stuff going on here oh Displacer Kitten Feywild Caretaker is really good. It's also good with Mana Vault, Ingram Monolith, Narset, Thran Dynamo, Candelabra. All right, all right, I'm back. I'm once again drafting a Displacer Kitten. Whoa, oh, okay, 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 okay. I'm going to take the Time Spiral. I have to take that. That's just not a question. Can I get a last pick Cabal Ritual? I actually can. It's not a guarantee by any stretch, but certainly Vito, Jace, Recurring Nightmare, Temple Guard, and Balance and Tracker are going to go. It's just going to be the question, can someone take that Elspeth, please? All right. And then now there's an 8th pick Coveted Jewel. Oh, I've got a Mishra's Workshop. Yep, Mishra's Workshop really did pay off here. And now we've certainly got enough playables. All right, the Turnabout came back. Um, I don't remember what was in the pack that I was considering here, but... Turnabout is certainly something I'm happy with. And now we're at 17 lands plus Street Wraith, Black Lotus, and all the mana effects. All right. You know what? I I like where we're at here. This looks like a pretty legit storm deck. If I get that Cabal Ritual last pick, I'll be thrilled. The dark the missing dark missing out on dark rituals like kind of my only regret, but otherwise this is just a very clean tendrils deck that also has Mentor make a million tokens. Or Feywild Caretaker go through the, the dungeon as additional win conditions. I definitely don't want crop rotation. 
I could hate and abrade or take it as a sideboard card. I could also take uh, Regrowth. I'm considering playing Sail into the West off this Ketria Triome. And Regrowth could actually be good in this deck. I'll, I'll sideboard it for now. And then here, uh, I don't think, I don't mind passing green. Oh, wait, what, do I want Seething Song? Hold on. I probably do want Seething Song in this deck, actually. It's pretty good with Candelabra, too. Yeah, that was a nice pickup. I'm glad I didn't fail to take that. All right, I'll just hate the Council's Judgment. Hate the Spell Queller or Mana Tithe. I'm going to take one of those two. I don't think I want to take Talisman. The Talisman off Workshop. Yeah, whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll just take Talisman. I actually would play that card. All right, there's Emery, which I don't think I would even play, but I'd consider it. Cabal Ritual. Come on. All right. Tobias doesn't even have the last pack yet. I'm going to be tracking it. You can see it up there. Woo! Up, up in there where Dan's got two packs. Going to pass one. Tobias has a pack. Going to pass me the last card. Come on, Cabal Ritual. Not Elspeth. You could do it. You can pass me the Cabal Ritual. It's it's totally okay. It's sanctioned. Temple Garden? <laughs> I'm actually going to play that, I think. But... <laughs> Oh, I was hoping for Cabal Ritual. That's okay. I think we did just fine, and uh, I can't wait to take a look at how this deck does. Let's go build it. All right, so taking a look at the deck here. Um, I actually don't think I want Street Wraith anymore because I'm not playing Doomsday. So I don't, it doesn't really do anything for me, like making my deck one smaller, I guess. But it doesn't, like it doesn't trigger Displacer Kitten or Mentor. It's not a spell. You can't Yogg Will it back. It doesn't. It doesn't seem like what I want. And this right now gives me 16 lands. I could even not play Pirate Spell Bomb. I don't have a huge reason to do it. I guess it's actually kind of nice with Displacer Kitten. Let's see. So if I, I think I like Mentor. Right now I have Mentor off of... I can't believe... So I talked to my team. It, Zurg took Cabal Ritual over Temple Garden with two in the pack. Which, if he's playing it, not crazy at all. If he's not, that's just that's just wild. Like, so worried about me being on Storm that he takes a card I play like one out of ten times. But I would have loved a Cabal Ritual, I will say that. Um, currently, this is three white sources. And... Because I don't have a fetch that gets Scrubland. Or rather, like, any other fetches that get Scrubland. Because uh, the Tarn doesn't do it. So it's three white sources plus... Lotus and Coveted Jewel. That's probably enough for Mentor, I would say. And then a lot of my busted Mentor starts will involve Lotus. Red, I have Seething Song and Pirate Spell Bomb and Chain Lightning off of Talisman, uh, Tarn, Undergrounds, or sorry, Volcanic. And then Marsh Flats doesn't actually get it, but, and Ketria Triumph. So that's one, uh, two, three, Four sources. Maybe I just cut the chain lightning then for another land. Actually, maybe I play Emery. I have a lot of cheap artifacts, and Emerying back Jar or Jewel is, is pretty busted. So, Plus, it fills my graveyard for Yagua. It's not too bad. And let's see. And then black, I have Marsh Flats, Scrubland, Watery Grave, Underground Sea, Scalding Heart. One, two, three, four, five black sources. Well, I don't have any black cards except Yagua and Tendrils. So. Okay, that just means, basically, I'm just trying to see how many islands I can get away with, because I want to play, like, as many islands as possible. In fact, the only lands that aren't islands in my deck are going to be Workshop, Scrubland, and Temple Garden, with all even the fetches all being, being able to get islands. And I just have all blue spells, too. Um, do I want... I mean, if I cut the Seething Song... I can just play Pirate Spell Bomb off of these lands. Because it doesn't really cost me anything to play Volcanic. Yeah, that seems fine. Then I don't really don't need red mana. 16, then I can play like one Swamp maybe. Just to have an extra black source. Or a Plains. And then I have plenty of red. I, just, I don't really need the Seething Song. Though Seething Song, let's see. How many sources? One, two... Three, four sources plus Lotus. The reason I like Seething Song is it does help with Yogwell and 
Candelabra does a good job of turning Seething Song mana into like more actionable mana. So I kind of like Seething Song actually. And maybe just play 16 lands. I don't think I need a mountain though. Tarn can get volcanic already. It gets an untapped red. So yeah, and this leaves me with one, two, three red sources plus talisman is four plus lotus is five okay and i have a lot of ways to untap land all right this deck looks sick i think this deck's very good but storm decks always have more of a fail like uh, a fail rate than a lot of other kinds of decks so uh, i guess we'll we'll see how this plays out let's take a look at what my team's got all right so updraft's got quite the brew is going to end up cutting like the questing druid and uh evolve sleeper but this is a black green Entomb, Animate, Exhume, Persist, Shallow Grave, Unmarked Grave deck with nothing to animate except Titans, which is still fine. And what I really like, Primeval Titan gets Valakut Strip Mine with Ramanop and to get those back and then Dryad to turn Valakut into like an actual threat. So kind of cool. Plus Minsk and Boo, Elvish Reclaimer, Inquisition Thoughtseize. This deck's a little wild, but I think it'll, I think it'll play out well. Dan's deck is absurd. He's got Chrome Mox, Mox Ruby, Time Walk, City of Traders, in a red white deck full of fours. Amazing. Like this deck can just play a turn one four drop or turn two four drop and just crush from there with Time Walk. Max got a red white deck that's not as busted, but also has Mox Sapphire and Soul Ring. We just completely outpowered our opponents, at least is what it looks like. I've got two, counting Time Twister. Max got two, Dan's got two. It's pretty good. And uh, yeah, this deck's fine. Just a good curve of creatures. Othari, Solitude, Parallax Wave. Yeah, a lot of good white aggro decks. Plus, both of the uh, white aggro players are on my team. There is a Thalia somewhere, but I think the other team might not be able to play it that well, which is good. The card's very good against me. Well, let's get to round one and see how this goes. All right, time to battle Slacks. Any turn one coveted jewels? No. What are your thoughts on turn one mulligans? Yeah, I fortunately have to. Yeah, I'm going to keep this. Uh, I'll put a Tendrils on the bottom, I suppose. And here, if I draw a land, then I have a pretty quick time spiral because I would like to draw a land to play a turn two Talisman. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. That'd be really nice. All right, we did. And I guess Volcanic is probably the, the right land. Though maybe, maybe even just a watery grave would have been fine there. Play a talisman, he's probably getting a triumph. And casting time spiral from this position is not the best because it doesn't really generate mana. But, oh, it's nice, it uh, spirals away the Stoneforge. Get Cauldra complete, huh? All right, draw. Oh, Seething Song? Oh, nice. It actually worked out kind of nicely to have this Seething Song here. Unfortunately, Turnabout doesn't do anything for me. Okay, Time Spiral. Only get to untap two lands, unfortunately. Okay, there's some... Th this is some action. Uh, yeah, I don't need to do all the High Tide stuff, but what I can do here is go Pirate Spellbomb... Island, Lotus. Uh, I guess I could just, I'm going to sack the Lotus. So I guess I'll sack this and just cast Feywild Caretaker. And then Pirate Spellbomb, the Stoneforge Mystic. I'm actually going to leave Candelabra in hand in case I draw, uh, let's get another island here, in case I draw Displacer Kitten, because Displacer Kitten would be would be the jam here. And I get to make a 1-1 one, one end of turn, so a pretty good turn 3, all told. <laughs> Lotus is a nice one. Slacks on all five colors in two lands right there. This is a Council's Judgment or something on the Feywild Caretaker. No, Toxic Deluge for four, even better. It kills both the things. All right, well, it's time for me to go ahead and do some scrying. A lot of, a lot of good outs. Coveted Jewel. And Monastery Mentor, yes. Let's go Coveted Jewel first. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to use up a little bit of spells here. Mm, how am I going to do this? Oh, I can cast the Jewel, the Mentor off the Jewel. So I can just go High Tide. I think... 
think um I guess I play Candelabra first because either way I'm gonna have to do this before I mentor so x equals four pay four and then I guess I don't want to use my only green mana up I don't really need red anymore so let's just cast the jewel and I'll just use with the spells if I draw other spells off jewel to to fuel the mentor here I didn't but I drew Yogwell so I could cast mentor Cast Yogwell, replay Lotus. Is that good? Or I could cast it. I think I'll just cast a Mentor here, and then next turn I'll just cast a just gigantic Yogwell. I think that's better because I can cast Yogwell, go Lotus, Spell Bomb, but then I don't get to play the Feywild Caretaker again. I think I can just pass here. Because if he kills the mentor, I can just replay it with Yogwell. So that's not that big of a deal. I still have the initiative. He's still in a spot where he has to deal with mentor in play, me having initiative, and Yogwell. All right, Ancestral's a start. But, I mean, it's a start of giving him options. It's actually pretty bad to, to use a mana on that. Oh, getting to rest here was really going to suck. That, that would be very unfortunate. But... My teammate has Inquisition and Thoughtseize, so no, I am getting to rest. All right. Damn, there goes my Yogwell. Now I need to find some action. I'm actually kind of out. That said, I do have a Mentor in play still. I have a draw step here. Yeah, Duress was a beat. Looks like he's got not too much else. Wait, what is this? Is this killing my Mentor? Not that my Mentor actually does anything at the moment. Mm, I think I'm going to untap the Mana Vault here. Okay, I'm going to go in the stash. All right. <laughs> uh, let's play a fetch land and pass. I just don't think attacking is that useful. Uh, if you could play a Haster, and I don't want the Jewel to get stolen, because Displacer Kitten Jewel... Now if I draw any non-creature spell, I just win. So Displacer Kitten is a start. And next turn off initiative, I'm going to get a 4-1. Okay, Fertile Ground's not too bad, so we're like 5-color Ancestral here. I will chump with Mentor if if it to keep the Jewel, though. Mm, green Mana. Delighted Halfling. Okay. We've gone pretty hard here into Leyline Binding on Monastery Mentor. All right. Well, if I draw a non-creature spell here, then I win. Otherwise, I, I probably lose, to be honest. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. I mean, I, I guess I do get a 4-1 off of this, so that gives me a little wiggle room, but... Spell, 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 spell. Oh, there we go. So now let's... This is just going to be easy now. Displacer Kitten... Mm -hmm. Narset, and then Flicker, Coveted Jewel, and that, that, that just ends the game here. Draw three, Narset, uh, tap this, Time Twister, Flicker the Jewel, draw three, do I have any instants here? No, I don't really, I'm not even going to bother cycling Trium. Time Twister, and then let's go, yeah. Easy peasy, and uh, oof, so that was a sweat, but we got round one, or game one. Sideboarding against five color stuff. Mm, I don't think so. I mean, I think the pyrite's good. Do I want sinkhole? Not really. Uh, I think we're good here. Okay, time for game two. Oh, I like this. Keep this hand. High Tide Candelabra Mana Vault is a lot of mana. So what I think I do here... Hmm. I think I just play Catria Trium on one. Don't like playing against Duress. This Duress the Time Twister in this hand gets a lot worse. Jesse did Mulligan to six here. I didn't play a very Duress-like land. Hmm. Now that I know I don't have to play the tap land, I think I actually just go turn one Mana Vault and then pass. Because this way I can go turn two Candelabra Emery, and then turn three I have a massive Time Twister with a ton of mana. And 
That sounds pretty good to me. Hopefully, okay, not getting duress. Could have a something with flash here, containment priest or something. Could, oh, probably just supposed to fey wild caretaker, right? Yeah. And hope he doesn't counter it or something. Mana tithe would be sick. Oh, cycling Raugreen Trium. <laughs> I, uh, I'll allow it, I guess. Uh, let's just get an island. I wonder if Feywild Caretaker means I should have a Plains in my deck? I don't know. Seems a little thin. Does mean a Swamp is good, though. Okay, so now... I mean, I could still go... High Tide, tap for four, Candelabra, three mana left, untap, six mana, cast Emery, cast Time Twister, two mana left. I mean, I used up a lot of resources because Mana Vault is kind of a f equal to a bunch of mana. Oh, I guess, well, I'm glad I didn't play Emery because that's not what I want to be. Uh, I'm definitely going to go to Lost Well. This deck's not looking to care about uh, getting plus one, plus one counters and trapping. I don't think I want either of those. I think I just draw... Maybe I'll draw a Lotus. Oh, Force of Negation. Huh. That's kind of interesting. I think I'm just going to go Island and go. I don't really even want to get Wandering Emperor. Make another token. If he doesn't do anything, then that's fine. Force of Negation, pitching Emery is fine. I might pitch Emery to Force just so I don't have Emery in my deck. I don't really want Emery in my deck against Caracas. Hope this is a creature. Or not a creature. <laughs> That's fine. We're we're gonna probably cycle the triumph here. I think finding an untapped land would be pretty nice. Okay. Now we get to go to the stash. Let's not pay. Let's get uh, a treasure token. Draw land. <laughs> uh, all right. Well. Yeah, I mean, sometimes that's you just do that. High Tide. I haven't played a land yet, but I'm, I'm not even going to Yogwill here, I don't think. Candelabra, and then untap these three lands. And the question now is, do I Time Twister? I could sack Lotus to Yogwill and High Tide, and that would make a ton of mana, but I feel like... I'm gonna win if I unless if I don't brick on time twister anyway. I think I sack this for black, and I think I time twister because drawing Yogwill again or drawing Lotus again, I think is pretty good. So it's time twister. Okay, the sacking it for black didn't work out because the mentor there, but I think we're still pretty happy here. Mm. Let's cast Narset. Minus Narset, hit Memory Jar. Okay. So I could go Workshop, Monolith Jar. I mean, I don't mind that. Let's go Monolith. My, my island's still tapped for two. Let's cast Jar. And if I crack this and I find Tendrils, I just win. And otherwise I'll have, I might hit Turnabout. Yeah, and they're not drawing anything because of the Narset. I hit Lotus Displacer Kitten. Okay, so now I go Lotus. No, actually I wanted to cast that otherwise, but whatever. Displacer Kitten. Uh, sack this. I should have gotten extra Displacer Kitten trigger. Sack this for black. Though I guess I've already used that, so let's just go Pirate Spell Bomb. And... I think, where am I at the dungeon? I think I just blink Feywild Caretaker. Take the initiative, get a get a 4-1, play this, draw. Oh, maybe I should have blinked Narset, I don't know. And then hit Dynamo and then pass, okay. Oh, I guess drawing there was actually kind of wild, <laughs> given that I'm uh, <laughs> uh, gonna discard my hand end of turn. But that's all right. All right, they just Jesse discards one. All right, I mean that probably wasn't perfectly done, but 
I think I should, I would have, I mean, well, not by probably, definitely, because I would have been able to get an extra Displacer Kitten trigger off not playing the Lotus first. I thought I had to sack the Lotus to cast the Kitten. I, I re didn't realize I was uh, a little bit short, or wasn't short. And then, I mean, I guess he's just going to Toxic Deluge here. That should probably be fine. I think I should have gone Cast Kitten, play Lotus, blink Narset, et, remove with Narset, or use Narset, play Pirate Spell Bomb, blink like Candelabra, and I think I probably could have just kept going, or at least gotten close to it. And if this isn't Toxic Deluge, I think it's going to be pretty pretty hard for Jesse to win this. Oh, Golos? That is not going to do it. Because I'm now I have Force of Negation up. Not to mention I'm untapping with Displacer Kitten and Narset. Granted, I don't have a lot of mana that's colors other than blue, but I think I think that's okay. I'm going to get to maybe get a mentor out. <laughs> Let's see. Am I going to miss? I missed. And I put uh, Yogwill on the bottom. Uh, how did I draw Yogwill? Did it shuffle? I don't know. All right. Let's just minus Narset. Oh, Frantic Search. Yeah. Frantic Search seems like the business here. I've already used Time Twister, but I haven't used Time Spiral. Mm, do I want to... Huh. Let's Displace our Kitten the Narset. I'm wondering if... Here, I'll discard Island. And I think at this point I just discard Mentor. I'm wondering if I want to use... Her Cycle Ketria Trium. Or tap Misha's Workshop and untap it. Alright, Time Spiral... So now, in order to cast Time Spiral, I go Turnabout, uh, Flicker the Mana Vault, Land, Untap, and then go 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and to tap this for all the artifact mana, and then cast Time Spiral and the Displacer Kit and the Mana Vault again. And one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, this is easy enough. And then I go Dynamo, and then Dynamo can conflict with the Narset, and that should be enough to, to find our tendrils here. Narset's going to find something every turn. All right, now I find tendrils. I'm going to go Lotus, Flicker, Narset. Yeah, this deck, this deck is doing some disgusting stuff. Uh, let's get Turnabout. I'm going to turn about myself, I guess, just... I mean, it doesn't really matter how I do this now. And then Displacer Kitten, the Narset again. Artifact, untap. Six. Uh, I guess I can play Emery. And then, and then this is enough to uh, get to Narset again. Get the Frantic Search. Frantic Search. And then now I've got enough to just Tendrils. Tendrils for for enough, I would say. Discard two lands, untap three lands. Sack this for black, and Tendrils of Agony you for it all. And then I can also flicker the Feywild Caretaker enough times to maybe get to, uh, <laughs> to get to the trap room over and over again. But all right, there we go. Uh, a turn five kill, but it felt like I was doing some pretty good stuff up until then, and uh, that puts us at one and zero. All right, time for round two. I'd like to play first. Huh? We would do better than this. This deck's broken. Let's not keep a hand without fast mana. Like here, I probably have to to keep it and put sail into the west back, and then just I think play play for ho hoping to draw a, an artifact to play. And with workshop, like a dynamo would be a crazy good draw here. Or I just uh, eventually just cast turn three, just cast time twister, and I think that that's that's kind of where I'm at here. I definitely could have gone off a turn earlier against Lux. Like the displacer kitten uh, last the last bit of that turn was very poorly played. So you don't need to put in the comments that I could have done that differently. I am well aware, uh, but yes, I, I I think I would have been able to do something there. Um, I don't need to fetch or anything. Let's just play volcanic. I guess maybe what I go. Now is turn three Emery. Mm, we're gonna Mystical Tutor. 
What are we getting? I don't like it. I hope it's not like a flash or something. Charter course. Well, I do like that. Because Zorg, I mean, I guess if you really want to dump something in your graveyard, that's one way to do it. But this is such a... You're spending three... Oh, they got an Archon in the graveyard. All right, that's fair. All right, now I'm going to crack this. I think I just get Underground C. Well, tapped one. My hand's kind of bad. I'm just going to Time Twister. He spent a bunch of time trying to get an Archon in his graveyard. Let's just do that. Ooh, Force of Negation? I don't really want to pitch Narset, but I, I gladly will if I have to. Well, I don't know about gladly. I will pitch Narset if I have to. But if I don't, I have a Coveted Jewel coming out next turn. Okay, so I kind of want Zord to tap out for something not good. But I guess you kind of always want your opponents to play things that aren't good. I guess, let me rephrase. I kind of want Zord to tap out for something that doesn't just like kill me on the spot that I have to counter. Um. Yeah, no, that is one I, I think I do. I do pitch here. Sorry, Narset. And here, let's go. I actually don't really need to commit the Seething Song. Let's go Coveted Jewel, draw, Yogwill. Interesting. Three, four, five. I could Yogwill this turn. So what I can do is I could go Seething Song, play Candelabra, untap. Oh, that doesn't really, that doesn't even help me Yogwill. Let's just pass and hope we don't get discarded this turn. And next turn I'll have a lot of mana and I'll be able to, at the very least, Yogwill Time Twister. Assuming, you know, I'm not... There are actually not that many duresses left. <laughs> I mean, Faithless Looting, discarding a creature like a Woodfall Primus would be pretty annoying. Oh, man. Uh, shallow Grave. I guess Zur Zurg doesn't have Shallow Grave. My teammate does. Could have Goryeo's Vengeance or Corpse Dance. Getting a Haster into play to attack and steal a Jewel would have been crazy good. But luckily, just discarding two lands, not a big deal. And now I'm going to get to... Kind of hopefully draw high tide. Wouldn't mind drawing uh, like a time spiral, of course, so I don't have to use the Yog Will. Obviously, drawing Lotus to turn your gonna Yog Will is pretty amazing. Okay, and then chart, of course. All right, I'm, I'm happy with all this. And even though it seems like Zorg's not doing much, to be clear, I did force the deck. I did time twister away after the whole chart, of course, Archon setup. So I feel like I've been doing a good job disrupting as well. I'm not gonna pay here. Oh, Frantic Search? Yeah, that seems like kind of a freebie. Let's just start by casting Frantic Search. I don't think I need to float any particular mana. Okay. Uh, what do I want to discard? I guess... I don't want to discard Yoggle in case of a counterspell. Which land am I going to play? <clears throat> I might just play the Scrub Land. I don't really think... Even if I hit High Tide, I have enough Islands in play that I'm not that worried about it. Hmm... Um, Seething Song, Candlestick. I don't think I'm going to play Dynamo first. It doesn't generate mana, so it doesn't really seem very relevant to do that. Time Spiral, Untap. Okay. So now I could Feywild Caretaker. Well, I'm definitely going to Feywild Caretaker. I don't have enough mana, unfortunately, to turn about Zorg's lands. I actually would do that otherwise. So what I think I'm going to do is play Dynamo. Play the Feywild Caretaker. Get an island. Uh, yeah, sure, whatever. Play Emery. And, okay, good. Didn't mill the Yogg well. Though I, I do have still have Time Twister back in my deck. And then pass, and then I get to make a thing. And now... I'm pretty much immune to hand disruption and because my hand is nothing. I have a bunch of cards kind of in play ready to roll. Like Emery is two cards with Pirate Spellbomb, for example. Oh, sneak attack. That's a little scary, though I have a fairy dragon token. Is this gonna be sneak archon? That would be the best. Oh, it's no, it's Torsten. That's that's way worse. Cause now. First of all, you missed. You got an Orcish Bowmasters in a swamp. There's a Mox in there too. Wow, scary. But Torsten doesn't have Trample. I'm not going to let it steal the jewel, obviously. 
I'm just gonna block with the fairy dragon here. And then, yeah, I mean, next turn I'll have something, have some problems, but if I can't win on this turn, then that's on me. All right. No. Scry two. Displacer kitten. Yes, that will do it. I didn't, don't even really need the force of negation, I guess, but whatever. Uh, let's go displacer kitten. I guess I turn about my artifacts now, funnily enough. They generate a lot more mana. Kitten, target coveted jewel, draw three, tap for three white. Sure, because I'll play mentor. And then artifact, untap. I can't even really brick here because I can emery back pirate spell bomb. So let's just get mentor out and sack this to draw a card. Emery the pirate spell bomb. Pirate spell bomb. <laughs> Displacer kitten the coveted jewel. Make some mentor tokens. Okay. Yeah, and that is going to be easily enough. Uh, tap this for black. Lotus. Flicker the jewel. All right, all right. You know, I I will I will admit this this is a good Displacer kitten deck. Displacer kitten is is getting there. Coveted Jewel is certainly the best card to displace her kitten. Lotus Resolves. Tap this for blue. High Tide. Displace her kitten, the Coveted Jewel. And we're about done here. Because we're at... Let's see. That's enough spells. So now I go Grim Monolith. And let's displace her kitten. The... Feywild Caretaker, I guess. And then put these on the stack. All right. And then we're going to get to Tendrils here for Lethal. The Feywild Caretaker has been actually incredible too. It just puts so much blocking into play uh, and forces the opponent to deal with that while also scrying and letting me just win the next turn pretty easily. And then I can Tendrils... Oh, hold on. I guess I should... I guess I should... Because I can Tendrils... Yeah, I can Tendrils for 16, and then... Oh, hold on, hold on. We're not actually... We actually didn't have enough... Maybe I have the Time Twister. Mm, is there a way around that? Let's draw a card. Oh, Frantic Search. Okay. And then now I don't... <laughs> I don't... Uh, Make it so the... I don't flicker the jewel here. I'll flicker the mana vault. All right. And then now I draw two. Discard two lands. Untap those. Talisman. Let's flicker... The Fate Wild Caretaker, it doesn't really matter. And then now we can tendrils for 20. Okay. Oof. I was gonna be fine anyway with Time Twister. I guess I didn't I guess leaving Force Negation on the top really didn't do anything. Because there wasn't really a world where he Zord could have a counter spell. Alright. And then tendrils you for 20. And I, if I needed to, ooh, not the jewel. Anything but. <laughs> Let's just flicker the mana vault. Uh and if I needed to, I could have uh, Yogg willed, of course. All right, playing against Reanimator. Yes, Reanimator Sneak. Sinkhole? Mm, not really like loving that. Street Wraith, Chain Lightning. No, no, I think our deck's perfect, and we should go to game two. All right, game two. <clears throat> I like some of what's going on here. I don't like the not having lands part, so I'm going to mulligan that. Yeah, I guess I keep this and really hope to draw Misha's Workshop. I think I'm putting Candelabra on the bottom. We're, Misha's Workshop or Lotus, though honestly Misha's Workshop would probably be better for me here. And because then I'd get to go turn two Dynamo, turn three Coveted Jewel. This hand currently is like tap land, tap land, land. <laughs> like it doesn't do anything. I guess turn three I can play a Mentor. Um... Hmm, I don't love that. I also don't like that they have Orcish Bowmasters. That that is a bummer. Okay, Marsh Flats. Is that there's still a Scrubland to go get? I should probably go get the Scrubland before I draw all of my uh, fetch targets here. There's a Swamp and a Scrubland. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, we're getting Mysticals too. 
Probably not going to win this game. Mulligan to a bad hand, and they have a great hand. So, yeah, that's going to be tough. Though, if they're mystical for chart course again, I get that it sets up reanimate. It's just like the value... Uh, you know, the value hound in me is looking at mystical and for chart, of course, and thinking like, whoa, not good. We discarded a swamp. Oh, yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about. That is just not very good. All right, let's go. I think I have two targets left. Yeah, let's just get the scrub land. Draw. <laughs> let's just play a tapped watery grave. It's fine. Not really loving this. I feel like Going to get sneak attacked out here pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Cycle Xander's Lounge? I mean, these are some pretty weak plays over here. Like, it's not the sign of someone who's got a lot to do. I would still love Workshop. Workshop would still be an amazing draw. Because then I could go Workshop, Dynamo, Emery. Just put two things into play. As it currently stands, I'm probably just going to cast a three-mana Emery. The saddest Emery. Because playing Mentor and having it die... Isn't, I mean, I, I don't really expect either to live, but playing Mentor and then next turn playing Dynamo is just fine. Whereas playing Emery, and if I mill, like, well, if I mill Lotus, it just, you know, it's on. But if I mill any other artifact I can play, I can play Dynamo, then cast that artifact. And I think that's pretty good. Okay. What you got, Zorg? Nothing, and I drew nothing. All right, let's play Emery. This is, this is what has turned into basically a failure of a draw on my part, I will say. We milled Ketria Triumph, Seething Song, Sail into the West, and Candelabra. See, like, look, now I can go Dynamo, Candelabra, untap two lands. Well, I guess I can't play the, the Mentor still. Oh. Oh, really? Okay, let's go Monastery Mentor. Black Lotus. <laughs> Lotus is nice. Oh, this is nice. Uh, Emery. Didn't kill Emery in response? Okay. Cast Lotus. You're not, not even going to kill the, the Mentor in response? Okay. Don't know what's going on. I'm not going to play my land yet because I, I feel like there's no way Zord could have a daze in hand. You can't let Mentor resolve. Oh, am I going to get Bowmastered here? Yeah, that's actually fine. Mentor's big enough to survive. Can kill some of my monks. Um, but what are you going to do? I got to play the Coveted Jewel. Okay. Now what? I guess we start with Frantic Search. Uh, yeah, that seems like the plan. And kind of go from there we're actually at storm count five here like if we draw tendrils we might just fire it off okay oh, discard temple garden island i am worried about getting brain freezed but let's maybe we just go narset oh hold on i need to find out who has the brain freeze okay our team doesn't have brain freeze but at this point brain freeze for 18 puts me to two cards in deck i don't have Hmm, I don't have uh, a way. Yeah, I guess I just lose to Brain Freeze if that's the case. Yeah, that's fine. I, I, I accept. I accept. Because I think passing now wouldn't really wouldn't really stop me from losing to, to Brain Freeze. So, because I would be milled down to two cards, I'd have to hope that there's Time Twister, Time Swirl, or Yogwill among those two cards. So I think I'm just going to play my spells. I'm actually not going to use Norset this turn. Because I don't really think I need to put a card into my hand. All right, I'll pass. And if I get brain freezed, I get brain freezed. There's just not that much I can do about it. All right, Whew. didn't get brain freezed, didn't get bow mastered. Now I just have lethal monks in play. Some monk S. And uh, we'll see what they do. Let's see, Zorg's going to play something now, which doesn't surprise me. Sneak attack is the card I could most likely lose to, like. Some sort of sneak Archon thing. Trumpeting Carnosaur kill my Emery. That's what we're hanging our hopes on? Okay. I mean, that does stop me from playing a spell. Oh, then reanimate the Carnosaur, going to a 12, discovering into Starving Revenant. 
It's kind of a cool one, generally a good thing to, to hit, but I don't think this is going to do the trick here. Like it's a good, it's, a, it's generally a good hit off the, the trumpet and carnosaur, but against Narset, first of all, you don't want to surveil anything to the top. And then second, block two of my things. There's five getting through. So if I play two spells, I win. Well, I think I can figure out how to do that. Okay. Oh, and Zorg did have the Goryeo's Vengeance in deck. <laughs> Funny. Okay, I mean, I assume win pretty easily here. I, I guess Zurg could have drawn, oh, I don't know, could have drawn some kind of interaction, but I, I really don't really know how we would get here without with the Mentor still alive if Zurg had any way to, to deal with it. I guess you could have drawn Bowmasters maybe, and we'll see, but... Bowmasters is one of the few things that could actually stop me here because now the mentor tokens are pretty big. So you're going to block mentor and block a token and take a million. Okay. Two and O, oh, cruising. Let's see where, how round three goes. Alrighty, time for round three. Battling against a troll ascetic who's on like blue black reanimate style deck with unfortunately memory lapse and force of will. Force of will is by far the best card against me. <coughs> in the format. I, I have Force of Negation, but I couldn't stop the Force of Will. Uh, do I keep this hand? I'm going to mulligan this hand. It feels like this deck could do better. Yeah, like I'll keep this. I need to draw... I'll put a Tendrils back. I need to draw a blue source, but at least this hand has action. Turn 1, Misha's Workshop, Grim Monolith, Pyrite Spell Bomb. And, well... Not really lo loving the seething song there, but I don't know. Turn three, time twister on the draw with nothing else. It's just not that good of a hand. Also, if you mulligan and then you draw a draw seven, it's like you didn't mulligan. Okay, so now if I can find blue mana, then I can do some things. Mm. Let's cast Talisman here and draw a card. Past the turn. All right, well, that was a really bad card to draw, but <laughs> that's all right. If I can find uh, blue, I still like my shot of doing something. Fortunately, against a control deck, yeah, all right. Looks like the other hand would have worked out better. Let's see, what am I hoping for here? I mean, I guess just blue mana is clearly what I need. All right, watery grave, I'll pay the life. Do I want a frantic search? Do I want to go end of turn? <sighs> I kind of want to sail into the west as well. I think I'm just going to pass for a turn here. I just don't really want to use my Grim Monolith and tap out for something. If he's not doing anything, then I can also just chill. Yeah, and do another island. That much is nice. Let's chill for another turn here. It's not like we have that much going on, but I feel like Matt's not using his mana at all. So passing and, thre and threatening a counterspell could be good. Well, I don't love that, but I, the way I kind of feel is if I cast a spell into that and just got it countered and, and he drew two, that'd be even worse. So I don't think this has been terrible. Hmm... I am going to have to use my Grim Monolith if I want to cast Sail into the West end of turn. I don't really even want to do that because my hand is pretty good. So what I think I might do <clears throat> is hope to draw a third blue so I can lead with like Narset into Frantic Search or maybe some kind of Displacer Kitten thing. I don't know, I don't know. Drawing a, a Coveted Jewel could also be pretty good. Overgrown Tomb, not sure if you're going to tap it or not. Yep, Overgrown Tomb tapped. And are we saying go or are we tapping out for something? Okay, or somewhere in between. <laughs> mm, maybe not. Two mana. End of turn. I think I still just do nothing. I'm okay waiting here. Black Lotus would be a nice draw too. Oh, main phase flash. Okay. Itali is the card we've seen. Oh, triplicate titan. Sure. Foot 
three things into play. Why did we main phase that? What are we what are we hoping to do? Oh. Uh, all right. Well, now we're going to just go for it here. All right. We'd like to draw a land to kick things off. That's fine. That can go get underground C. Okay. So let's get underground C and let's start with displacer kitten. I think that's got to be the the place to begin. Uh, I think I actually do want to Seething Song first. And see what's up. I guess I didn't need to tap my mana, <laughs> my white mana. All right. And if this gets countered, this gets countered. And if it gets forced, okay, it did not. So now we can cast Frantic Search using the red and Displacer Kittening the Grim Monolith. And then the Frantic Search will untap our three lands here. And we're starting to go. We are going. I'll discard Island and Mentor, I guess. Untap those three. Tap these. Cast Narset. Target the Grim Monolith again. I'm starting to feel like Matt doesn't have a Force of Will, but maybe he's going to force the Narset. Yep, there we go. All right, forcing Narset, pitching Tinker. Well, I still feel like I'm in decent shape here because now I get to go Time Twister and flicker the Grim Monolith. And, well, let's see what Time Twister has for me. One of the things that's sick, Coveted Jewel is the card I want most. Okay, please don't redraw your Force of Will. That's that's all I ask, that's all I ask. Uh, I don't think there's any way to get blue mana, so let's just do this. And I can't cast Force of Negation, but if I, uh, if I don't get Force of Will here, then I think I just win. Oh, baby, there we go. Coveted Jewel. Tap this for three. High Tide, Flicker, Coveted Jewel. He double tightened me with Force Backup, but it was kind of slow, and I was able to set up a win through Force of Will here. Displacer Kitten. All right, I got I to gotta give the cat props, and uh, we are up a game here. If he had redrawn Force of Will, I was dead, but I, nothing I can do about that. Do I want Regrowth against a Force of Will deck? It's not like that's even that good, to be honest. Um, I, like, I don't want to cut anything. No. I think we're ready to roll. All right. Time for game two on the draw here. <laughs> well, this one I'm going to mulligan. <laughs> don't like playing against Memory Lapse, Force of Will, Mystic Confluence, Inquisition of Kozilek. Like, this is a fast clock. Oh, man. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll keep this. This at least has some good fast mana, where I have Workshop Candelabra, so Coveted Jewel can lead to a dub. Um, actually, I shouldn't have played the Workshop. That was just nonsense. Uh, uh, Dynamo would be okay, though. I hand is all lands now. Mm, let's see. Talisman, sure. All right, Coveted Jewel. Let's go. Let's go Coveted Jewel. Not quite. Let's go Pirate Spellbomb. Let's go get the Ketria Trium too. I don't even think I need, or maybe I just sack <clears throat> the spell bomb. I don't know. It's kind of good against hand disruption to not have cracked it yet. Let's just get Ketria Trium here. Draw. Monastery Mentor. Okay. That one can maybe come down in a turn or two. I'm just going to pass here for now. He has a bunch of mana up. Even if I drew Coveted Jewel, I don't know that I would be flinging my card at them all right the good thing is too my deck is a scary deck like if i was playing against this deck or when you know they know i've got black lotus kitten and mana vault and all this stuff me sitting there with a bunch of cards in hand is pretty frightening because it's like how close is he to going off they don't know that my hand is garbage but if they uh it d could cause them to play a little bit more tentative um just cast Mentor. We're kind of uh, throwing it up as a token sacrifice, as it were. I don't have any, anything to follow up, but hoping to draw out a counter spell. I guess drawing out Memory Lapse isn't even that exciting. Oh, this looks like Urtai? Oh, I'm really happy about that. Urtai and I draw a card is, is pretty great. All right. So I'll save the Pirate Spellbomb because there's a chance I want to kill the 
Urtai so I can play Narset and not get Narset attacked. Drew another land. Don't love that. Troll's got five cards in hand. That's kind of a lot of cards. This matchup, I think, is tough, but we'll see. Well, Flash Itali. All right. See what you got. Force of Will and Black Lotus. Well, Black Lotus is good, and obviously it would have been nice for me to draw Black Lotus, but hitting Force of Will off Itali is not that bad. Now Force of Will is gone for good. Oh, no. Is this another reanimate? Oh, Shieldred. Well, at least Lotus is in my graveyard now for this Yogwell. Now if I draw something... Oh, Displacer Kitten. Okay, hold on. Hold your horses. Um, well, <clears throat> I can't cast Displacer Kitten and Norset in the same turn. Playing Lotus doesn't really help. I kind of want to just draw a card or maybe... No, I'm at 14. I'm taking... Yeah, all right. I'll, I'll do this the other way. I'll just cast Displacer Kitten here. Oh, if you had a Counterspell, you had a Counterspell. Memory Lapse, sure. Pass the turn. I can't beat anything else. <laughs> That's for sure. I'm taking seven, then I'm going to... Taking, taking two more, going to five. So with a Shield in play, I can't cast any draw sevens. Oh, he's Shieldred, too. Wow, yeah, this matchup is really tough. I, I, I don't know that I'm going to... I'm going to emerge victorious because I'm pretty much dead this game. I guess I can crack the spell bomb to draw, go to three. And if I draw a Mana Vault or Grim Monolith, that could go somewhere. Mm, sure. Draw a card. Mm-hmm. All right, I guess I go Narset. Minus, look for Mana Vault. I hit High Tide, Talisman of Impulse, and Time Twister. That will not do it. Okay. Mana Vault had outs, because I could go Workshop, Mana Vault, Candelabra, Kitten, something, but all right. Going to game three. Yeah, I mean, I can't board in Council's Judgment. I just have to be a little bit faster. All right. That's my plan. All right. Time for game three. Let's, let's get a good hand. My, my first two hands have been pretty medium. This hand... This hand's so good if I draw a big artifact. And it has turn three Twister. If I draw any land, I guess I got to keep. Keep, and I'm going to play turn one Ketria Triome. And if I draw Mana Vault or Grim Monolith... This hand's almost unbeatable. Okay, I don't care about Retrofitter very much. Let's just go land Candelabra. Pass the turn. <clears throat> if I don't draw anything, I'm just going to have to fire off Time Twister here. Uh, no, that unfortunately is not anything either. All right. Underground C and Time Twister. hate shuffling away this Misha's Workshop, too. But... What are you gonna do? Getting memory lapsed? Eh, I cast it next turn. Then I get to play my workshop first, so that's kind of nice. Yeah. All right. I got memory lapsed. Let's see what Matt's got going next. Yeah. Drawing Vault or Grim Monolith would have made this hand pop off. I would have gone turn two workshop. Let's say it was Mana Vault. Play Mana Vault. Play Kitten. And then play Candelabra, untap the Mana Vault, use Candelabra. Oh, I guess I wouldn't have been able to Time Twister. Oh, no, I would have been able to Time Twister. Yeah, that would have been sick. Oh, he didn't play another land. That's interesting. I unfortunately still have to Time Twister here. It's not very good, but I don't really have uh, other outs. Oh, okay. Now it's kind of... Are, are you on Force of Will or not, huh? Let's go Candle. One, two, three. Lotus. And... Let's see. If I tap this for five, eight... Uh, I don't have quite enough to cast High Tide 
if the coveted jewel gets countered. So I'm just going to cast coveted jewel or high tide time spiral if the coveted jewel gets countered. So I'm just going to go for coveted jewel this turn. Kind of assume it's going to get countered. Oh, it did not. Okay. And then so now I can go Thran Dynamo and then I can go for Time Twister or Time Spiral because if I if I pass the coveted jewel gets stolen. So let's not do that. Mm -hmm. And if Matt taps mana, then he can't use the retrofitter. So memory lapse isn't that big of a deal. Okay, okay. And, you know, if he uh, does counter this and then tries to play something on his turn, oh, hi, Jules. I have Force of Negation that I can pitch to cast, which is nice. I'm assuming he doesn't have Force of Will at this point. He could have Memory Lapse, and the reason not to counter the Jewel with Memory Lapse is you really want to make a Retrofitter to come steal the Coveted Jewel. It is Coveted, after all. All right. Untap. And that's it? <laughs> I can't even Tendrils? Uh, okay. Hi, Jules. Hi, Julie Bear. And my Coveted Jewel is going to get stolen? Oh, my God. This is a brutal turn. I I somehow twisted into five four lands, high tide, and then a mentor and a tendrils I can't cast. All right. Well, let's see how this goes. My guess is not well, but certainly there is a possibility here. And had I even high tided first, it wouldn't have really mattered too much. Oh, I guess last turn, if I had completely gone for it with high tide. Then maybe true name, sure. The sick part is I can't even get white mana with this uh, Scalding Tarn. So I can't cast Mentor, because Mentor would be a way to get out of this as well. Okay, well, if I had black, I would have also tendrils him for like 16 or whatever. But I would have actually, I think it was like 18. All right, well, uh, let's not pay for the mana vault. Emery Lurker of the Lock. Sure. Guess I'll play Emery. Damn, this was a beating. Mm, mill Turnabout Memory Jar. All right, well, Milling Memory Jar is kind of nice at least. All right, let's pass the turn. I'm just going to make another servo. Okay, that's not so bad. I still feel like I'm almost 0% to win this at this point, but... Yeah, I needed to, I had a lot of mana after a time spiral there, but did not quite get there. Um, I mean, I am going to be able to, like, having Tendril's High Tide Candelabra is a threat. So it's possible I could get something going. Though it is, I don't think the Emery's going to survive, so maybe it's immaterial, but having te Tendril's in your hand when you have Jar is kind of awkward because. If you crack the jar, you, you just lose access to tendrils until the end of turn. There's no way to get it back. Okay, you can attack me for three. I don't think he's going to let me attack with Emery, unfortunately. <laughs> the true name does make it so a Feywild Caretaker is a little bit less good. I should have probably just untapped the Mana Vault, actually, last turn. I had so much mana. Okay, well, I'm just going to pass the turn. All right. It's going to let me maybe Mana Vault? I don't know. Or a memory jar. Oh, sail into the west. That's a lot better. Let's go land. Cast high tide. Cast memory jar. Or try to cast memory jar. Let's just cast jar. Oh, actually, I'm going to tap all these mana first. And... I guess I want to tap green. Why not? One, two, three, four, five, six. No, five, six. All right. Use the colorless spells here. And this way I can cast a memory jar with only Mishra's workshop mana. Use that the, the most effective way possible. All right, jar. And maybe he's got a counter spell. I'm really hoping he counters here. All right, well. I'm going to sail into the west then. That's going to be where I start. Embark. 
Okay, so he could draw him into a counter spell here, but he's got seven cards. I guess he could also not discard, but his hand was Flash, Lorraine Reveal, Generous Scent. All right, not all that much. Now, I mean, I actually don't know if I can win this game because I need to beat Force of Will and maybe Memory Lapse without... Uh, Without force of negation, if I end up cracking this jar. Hmm. Let's go pirate spell bomb. Talisman. And I think I crack the jar. I don't really think it makes too much sense not to. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, some of the counter spells existed in the jar hand. That's that's the that's the dream, you know. Brainstorm could all could really help him. If he had brainstorm here, I would force of negation it for sure. Oh, we're tapping a lot of mana. So he has Mystic Confluence in hand, maybe. Okay. Is this going to be like Bounce, Emery, Draw 2? If that's the case, or Draw 3 cards, okay. That just increases the odds that the cards are getting jarred away or counterspells. So I don't mind that. I really didn't want to see Force of Negation in this hand, though. That was unfortunate. All right, well, this is going to be close, because now my turnabout's gone, but I drew... Oh, 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 I drew a hand. Okay. So let's go... Displacer Kitten. And see what's up. I kind of... I feel pretty good about this. In fact, I think my deck's busted enough that I might have been able to get there. Because now I go... Lotus, Displacer Kitten, the Candelabra. And that Displacer Kitten Candelabra is a lot of mana. All right, Lotus Resolves. And let's go, yeah, Grim Monolith, Target Candelabra in response. Two, three, four. Four. Wait, hold on. I gotta tap this for mana. One, two, three, four. All right. One, two, three, four. All right. So now I get to Candelabra those four lands. If he wants to kill Displacer Kitten now, he can. But I don't think that's gonna work out. I don't think that's gonna matter too much. In fact, I could even frantic search in response if I wanted to get a lot of mana. All right. And then now now I can tap these for mana and go and let the Displacer Kitten hit the Candelabra. Okay, hit the Grim, the Grim Monolith, hits the board. Let's go Narset. And in response, let's target the Candelabra. And in response, let's tap the Grim. And let's go one, two, three, four, five. I don't think... It even makes sense to, to untap the Mishra's Workshop anymore. So, I'm not going to bother. All right, and that flickers the Candelabra again. And face down. My Tendrils, I got to discard it to the sail into the west. And this, is, this got around the exact thing I was worried about. Um, don't think he has Ancestral or Thought Scour, but I think I can do this the safe way without even casting Frantic Search. Get Narset, and he's got a bunch of face down cards. Hopefully, Force of Will's among them. And my plan is to Narset into Yogmoth's Will, and I should have Yogmoth's Will and Time Spiral both left in my deck here. At which point, uh, I could cast, I could cast Yog Will first, see if it resolves. Because if it does, I just win. And then if it doesn't. It's going to be pretty hard for a Time Twister or Time Spiral to miss with Narset Displacer Kitten in play. Even if it's shuffling him into new counters, I think that that's unlikely. Oh, he had the Brain Freeze. That's why I didn't draw the card. That's why I just used Narset. Okay. Well, unluckily for Matt, I have the Time Twister in hand. So what I do in response to Brain Freeze is I cast Frantic Search here. And 
I guess I'm going to displace her the Narset at this point. Oof, that frantic search or that brain freeze is scary. And I might also crack the pirate spell bomb. I, I basically would like to draw, actually, I'll just draw a card now. I go to three cards. Okay, I want to be able to keep the good cards. All right, Yogwell. Boom, boom, boom. And then Mill's Time Spiral, I think, is my last card. Or did I already use Time Spiral? Oh, Time Spiral. I, I must have already. I, I guess. Oh, I already used Time Spiral, right? All right, well, if Matt now has Force of Will plus Memory Lapse, then I guess. Oh, Memory Lapse doesn't even do anything anymore. <laughs> That's amazing, because I get to go Yogwoth's Will here. Uh, I guess I'll sack the Lotus, why not? Uh, and then Yogwill will, will flicker, I guess I'll flicker Candle, but I have a Narset, so if he Memory Lapses the Yogwill, then <laughs> I'm just going to Narset it and, and draw that way. All right, yeah, you can brainstorm. That's fine with me. Whew, what a game. What a game, what a deck. Getting the 3-0 here against he even had brain freeze in his deck this this was a tough matchup it really was but uh all the pieces of this deck worked together so nicely it had been a while since i got to draft like storm storm and uh this this is just like a really fun and very good deck so here boom there we go yogwill resolves and uh tendrils of agony takes the day wow what a match. 3 and 0. Let's check in on the team. All right, we're checking in on the team, and here's how the team is doing. Dan is in round number three, game number three. The current status is I 3 0'd, updraft 0 3 would and then the other two guys got three wins together. I don't know the exact ratio. What that means, though, is we have six wins locked in. We can't lose this draft. We can tie, though. If Dan wins this game three, we win the draft. Otherwise, we tie. So it's a uh, well game three for all the marbles. I want uh, I want to take a look at what Dan's got going here. And uh, he's remember if you remember, we can actually even take a look at his deck here. Uh, this is the deck with Ruby, City of Traders, Chrome Mox, Time Walk, Red White Aggro. So I'm expecting some some hopefully busted starts here. Let's see how it goes. All right, Dan's on the play. Horizon Canopy Esper Sentinel. So Horizon Canopy is a pretty weak planes to play. But, so, and it shows that Dan has no other white mana in hand, which could mean, you know, makes it less likely he has more lands in hand in general. Obviously, he probably has some red lands. But against Zorg, uh, the, the taking the damage off Horizon Canopy is not the end of the world. Zorg does have Bowmasters, which dunks on Esper Sentinel pretty hard. All right, Dan, I'm expecting a... A pretty nice turn too. Uh, I guess not. I guess we get S percent. Where's all your your moxes? Where are all the moxes? Maybe the time walks hiding somewhere. Okay. As, turn on mox jet, of course, goes a long way towards making S percent no weaker. But S percent did at least make it so Zorg didn't get two mana on turn one because he he felt he had to pay for the S percent yeah, which I normally would do as well. And then now. What are we doing? We're on three mana, and if you remember, we played against Zorg, who had the like Grixis sneak reanimator deck, and uh, Dan on the red white aggro deck. All right, no, no play turn two. Hopefully, that doesn't signify a Bowmasters, but it doesn't really change your your attacking strategy. Esper Sentinel is t getting taken down by Bowmasters, whether it attacks or not. Okay, there's a mountain, and there's Brea's Apprentice. Yeah, that is fine, but it's always a bummer to see hands like this when you don't have a when you have moxes and whatnot in your deck. You always want you're hoping for a little bit better, you know. Okay. On the other hand, though, if uh, Zorg doesn't have a good play end of turn, well, now playing that the ordering here was actually kind of bad because. Now the orc bowmaster, orcish bowmasters, if Zerg had it, could shoot down the thopter and then the, the army token could block the Esper Sentinel. So you'd get to take out two good things. So there I think you probably want to send with the Sentinel first. But 
Immaterials, we did not have the Bowmasters, and now could play a sneak, and then Dan draws a card and gives Dan free reign to maybe have a, a sick turn four. That's that we can hope. Could also could be doing some reanimating type stuff or trying to get that going, but maybe the Esper Sentinel gives uh, gives Dan a nice little card here. We'll, we'll see. It's tapping out. Oh, it's tapping out for Thief of Sanity. Well, that's not really that bad. In fact, that is kind of weak and no lands. So Zorg's draw has slowed down quite a bit. At this point, he's on parity for having the mocks. It's going to be turn four. He has four mana. He had mocks on three, three mana, because this came into play tapped off Misty, and he really wanted to get red, I assume. This is the this is the opening. Now, hopefully, Dan has a good four drop to kind of take advantage of this weak start. You do have block with Thopter token, sack it to Apprentice regardless, but Dan has some good fours. Yeah, Hellrider's not actually the, the best of them. You can send... You could send with Esper, Sentinel, and Hellrider. I kind of like that play. That, listen to this play. If Thief of Sanity blocks Esper, Sentinel, you could sack the Thopter to give Esper, Sentinel plus two plus O. Oh. And then you're trading Esper plus Thopter token for Thief, but I think that's fine. Thief's a really dangerous card to have in play. And then if if Zorg doesn't block, now you can block with the Thopter and sack the Thopter to exile it until your next turn. So that seems like a, some good optionality there. All right, let's see what Dan sends with. And it is Esper, Sentinel, and Hellrider. Yeah, I like this. Because this way, on, on the, getting to, to sack the Thopter to exile the top card... It's getting a card back out of it, which is pretty huge. And I would also be fine trading Esper Sentinel and Thopter Token for Thief of Sanity here. Just because, Thief of, again, Thief of Sanity is the kind of card that can make the game go really sideways. So now you just sack the Thopter Token. You get, it was like a one and a half for one, something like that. And you got some good damage in. This also leaves uh, Dan with Hellrider and Brea's Apprentice against just three lands. All right. Board is kind of clear here on Zorg's side. He's drawn the fourth land. We might have the kind of game where he just slams sneak attack, says go. Dan has seven on the board, just needs like a four power haster, which obviously that's not the easiest thing in the world to have. Oh, well, okay. Virtue of persistence. Take out the Hellrider, gain two life. Oh, man. Into Jace Verdin's Prodigy. Okay. Let's see what Dan's got. Othari? This looks like we're tapping so fast. Oh, Comet. Comet, Stellar Pup. All right, we hit up to six. We rolled a six. <laughs> All right, now we're nugging for damage is probably what's happening here. Uh, do you kill Jace or do you go at the face? I, I don't mind going face. I think that's pretty good. And then we hit two squirrels. Okay. So Comet was a six loyalty planeswalker that dealt... Uh, five to the or seven to the opponent and then put two squirrels into play and now it's sitting there on six loyalty yeah you can block the jace jace can block a squirrel take three down to five and still dangerous again when you're playing against a sneak reanimate deck like you're not ever that far away from discard archon of cruelty shallow grave or corpse dance it back or sneak attack sneak in torsten attack kill T comet put seven one ones into play like obviously we could lose this game but it is this is a pretty good start i like i like going face i think trying to th threaten some maybe burn spells or something is, is a good deal is Zorg really thinking about chumping there you I mean you got to block the squirrel token that's that's a freebie but Mm, no, yeah, there's no way. It just, it'd be shocking if that was the play. All right, five life. Let's hope there's no attacks on this side. No hasted anythings, no, uh, you know, Torstens or, or Archons. Zurg has access to those cards, but there's not as, there's not that many ways to get in there. I hope, also hope that, like, Zurg skipping playing Thief on turn two to, to use Misty to get Xander's Lounge really showed me that uh, he's valuing red mana. Not that we knew everything. We don't know if he had Thief in hand or anything, but the evidence points to me that he has got he needs red mana, and I believe the card is for Sneak Attack, and I think he's going to hopefully not go Sneak Attack Mountain, sneak in something, because that, that's a way we could lose this game. Under most circumstances, Dan is not losing this game. All right, what are we discarding with Jace? At least it's not an easy slam Archon Corpse Dance sort of situation, so that's nice to see. And Emrakul, 
Oh, wow. Is this an Emrakul corpse dance situation? Oh, I guess it is. Okay. Goryeo's Vengeance, the Emrakul. Okay. But I guess we were tanking because this doesn't quite kill Dan. And in fact, if you don't attack Comet, he just keeps the Comet. And you're losing Emrakul end of turn. So you kind of have to attack Comet. Uh, let me see in the game log. Dude, Dan's getting attacked by Emrakul. Wow, okay. I mean, I guess you just sack five land and a squirrel and just hope hope to get there is, is my guess. If the Comet hits either one or two or four or five, you win. And then six, well, assuming Zorg doesn't play anything new. And then, of course, six, you definitely win because you get multiple rolls. Huh, wild turn and a wild game. A great end to this draft one way or another. All right, well, there goes all the lands. Emrakul hits. Dan goes to two. Emrakul gets shuffled back in. It's a virtue that's not going to do anything this game. All right, does Zorg have a follow-up? An Orcish Bowmasters? That would, that would be sick. Also, the Emrakul is leaving here, so it's not like the game just ends. Oh, is this killing Comet? With like a bitter triumph. Oh, Angress Rampage. Yeah, no. Target opponent sacrifice a planeswalker. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's what you got to do. So Emrakul's exiled. One card in the graveyard. I mean, you attack for three. Put Zorg to two. And... <laughs> Chilly talk. <laughs> the dog's going nuts over there. All right. You bash for three. And then that's it. Land go. Upkeep. Mystical Tutor for Firebolt. No. <laughs> I assume that's what's going on. Yep, there's Firebolt. And I guess we tie the draft. Well, I 3 out. I did what I could. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, you don't win the draft and uh, you despite your best efforts. All right, let's take a look at this deck, though, because this thing's a beauty. So I, I really just like, like taking a look at uh, some of the more busted decks and Obviously, Lotus is why we went in this direction. Really wouldn't have. I want to say Coveted Jewel did a lot of work. The, that speculative Mishra's Workshop pick really worked out. Just having Jewel, Memory Jar, Dynamo, Grim Monolith, Mana Vault. You don't need to spend Workshop Mana very many times in a game for it to be good enough. Like, if you spend it twice, you got six mana out of your land and not, never ends up again. That's... It's like you got... Th you know, you, you would have had to tap on Normal Land six times instead of just two, two times. And that that's huge. Displacer Kitten gets the MVP award, probably. I mean, obviously Lotus was the actual best card in the deck, but Displacer Kitten was really solid. Didn't mind playing the Mentor, though. I don't think it was, like, amazing. I didn't really need it after it with the Tendrils. Caretaker did some really good work, and then having a bunch of draw sevens, fast mana. Mana base actually was nice. It was five-color Storm with supporting High Tide. Managed to get there on that, too. Well, this is a beautiful Storm deck. They don't always come together this cleanly, and we got the nice 3 L. so... You know, I can't say that I... Uh, I can't say that I regret how things went. Obviously, I would have liked my teammate to win round three, but it's all right. I, I, I did my part. And uh, you know what? That'll do it for today. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you watching me finally cast Yawgmoth's Will and Displacer Kitten cards that I frequently pass over. Same with Feywild Caretaker. And get to actually storm. It doesn't happen as much as you might think. I'll be back tomorrow with another draft. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and you won't miss a single draft.